Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and in this one, talking about the wall breaker AI, how wall breakers work, how they're gonna path, because um, people make so many mistakes, there's so many wall breaker fails, they can cost an attack that would otherwise have been well planned and would have worked out. So this video talking all about the AI, have a little bit of um, little mini bases built. I'm gonna be showing replays in friendly challenges, as well as drawing out some of the uh, some of the ways that wall breakers are gonna path in these different scenarios that really illustrate the pathing of wall breakers. So let's start with the basic key concept that's gonna remain true throughout this video, and that's that wall breakers target buildings. They don't target walls. That's how you wanna think of it. So just taking a look at this pretty simple layout, you have three buildings in a compartment, and let's say you wanna to try to wall break this corner. Now it's not that simple. The, the wall breakers are going to target the closest building. So um, assuming this wall is going to continue and there's more buildings behind it, it is on a corner in this situation. But assuming you can't just be cheap and drop the, the wall breakers like right here, um, it's pretty difficult to actually wall break right on this wall right here because the gold storage is much closer to the wall and it's going to draw the wall breakers over to it. So if you drop wall breakers back here, they're gonna target the wall, not that wall, but probably about that one right there. Um, they're gonna target that wall because the closest building to them that's inside a wall of a protected compartment, a closed compartment, is that gold storage. That's the closest building to them, so they're gonna target the wall closest to it. Now, they're not gonna go in a weird path and target that wall. They're gonna target the wall that's most convenient for them, but they're gonna still target the building that it's closest to them, regardless of which wall is closest to them. If they were going the shortest path, they'd just go straight down to this wall. That's how wall breaker pathing used to work way back in the day, if you guys remember, but now they target buildings. So that's gonna be what wall breakers target, is that wall right here. Uh, let's take a look at a replay example real quick. So as you can see here, we're gonna drop the wall breakers back closer to the wall that corresponds to the elixir collector, but despite that, the wall breakers targeted the gold storage wall as I drew out. Okay, moving on to a slightly more complicated scenario is this one applies more to trying to wall break through two layers, which is something you often do to avoid having to use a jump spell. So let's kind of explore two layers of wall breaks and how that works. Now, first of all, you have to realize that even when a compartment is opened, it doesn't mean the wall breakers are gonna ignore that compartment. So for example, if we are to wall break in right here and open up that wall, if you also drop wall breakers over here, they're still gonna target that wall. And the reason is uh, these two buildings uh, are protected enough by walls going from here all the way up to where the entry point was that it still warrants uh, the wall breakers uh, targeting that wall. So typically if the wall extends significantly past those buildings, even if it's not a closed compartment because the wall is going to be open here, it's going to be an open compartment, but even still the wall breakers will still target the wall in front of these buildings that are not actually closed into a compartment right here. So keep that in mind. Um, it's not as simple as once a compartment has been opened, uh, the wall breakers ignore the walls guarding that compartment. They will still open the compartment in multiple different locations. Now, if you drop wall breakers here, then wall breakers right behind, they're not gonna target the wall right next to where you opened one of these walls. They're gonna go one layer deeper and target these walls. So keep that in mind. This is very good if you're doing a queen charge. You wanna come in right here and have your queen exit right here for like a 10 v 11 two star attack or some kind of complex queen walk. Just know you can open the compartment in multiple different sections. Now you gotta be careful if you um, want to double wall break through two layers. Um, what you can do is just drop them in a flat uh, straight line. So open that wall, then come and open that wall. Um, the wall breakers should uh, uh, go through that pathing. However, if the compartments were to be closed like this, if you can imagine walls on either side making uh, smaller compartments on this outer layer, they would open this up, but instead of going for that next second layer, they'd target this compartment or this compartment. Remember, they're targeting buildings. So you have to think, is the compartment closed and are the buildings uh, that are inside that compartment 
um, how close are they to where you're dropping your wall breakers. Now also we're going to see um, an interesting kind of thing that happens with the third layer wall breakers when they're going for this back wall. So let's take a look at the replay uh, for this section of the base. Okay, so we're going to start with the wall breakers up top there opening up that wall of course and now we're going to go down a little bit lower and you can see these same wall breakers not entirely you know a, a huge distance from that original spot open up that wall but now that both are open um, they're going to target that second layer there's no buildings that are really that protected by walls and they're going to even target that third layer even the wall breakers we drop up at the top there uh, the, the barracks they're not going to be targeted they're going all the way for that third wall which is interesting um, because those top wall breakers you could argue you should target the second layer but it tends to be once you start to get past the second layer of the base um, they're not going to wall break the second layer in multiple locations they will that first layer but once you get deeper in the base they tend to go more vertical and uh, target those deeper compartments rather than panning out and going to the side. So moving right along, this is our next little section here. And this one kind of shows how wall breakers are going to try to take the path of less resistance, even if it's a longer voyage for them to take. So you can see we have the double layered walls throughout here, which makes it difficult because they have to get through two layers and there's nothing in this initial layer. So wall breakers are going to try to avoid um, even if these buildings, if you drop a wall breaker like right here, the closest building is going to be that clan castle. However, they take into account the fact that there's two layers of walls you have to get through. So any wall breakers dropped in this area around here are going to go ahead and target this wall because that is the, um, the path of least resistance. However, if you take that to the extreme and drop a wall breaker all the way over here, it's not going to go crazy and run around here. It's just going to target this wall, which is something you'll notice in general. Wall breakers are not crazy. They're not going to run across the entire map just for sake of their AI. Um, if there's an empty compartment and there's nothing else around, they will just break open that empty compartment. But the idea is when you have other buildings, other possibilities that are just a little bit farther away, um, if, it, if it works for the AI, if it's going to mean that they're going to target a building instead of just a wall, or they're going to have to t target one less uh, layer of walls to get to a building, typically they're going to go ahead and take that path. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the replay here. All right, so starting off with the wall breaker, pretty far over, it's going to target that wall, but as you start to slide them farther uh, closer to that elixir collector to where the single walls are, you can see they'll go pretty far out of their way uh, to open up that wall. Even if it's a farther distance, they're going to make sure they uh, take that farther distance, farther travel time, uh, because there's only one layer of walls protecting that building. So this next one is an interesting uh, thing that you guys probably have noticed, and that is kind of how you can clear out certain compartments and allow your wall breakers to push deeper. So let's say you want to get troops into this compartment right here. Instead of having to try to wall break through two layers like this, you can simply clear out a compartment, then use the wall breakers. So if you were to use a, a wizard, for example, to take out this building, now that becomes dead space, just like we saw over here. So the wall breakers are going to try to avoid that. If you drop one here, it'll go around and target this wall. If you drop one here, it'll go around and target that wall. But that's something to keep in mind if you're going to try to break open, you know, instead of using a jump, if you're going to try to use the wall breakers to break in beyond that first layer. If you can take out that outer compartment and there's a spot on the outside of the base where you can get deeper with your wall breakers, take out that building. Um, and it will allow the wall breakers to push deeper into the base. Okay, so the first wall breaker, of course, is going to target that uh, elixir storage that's still up inside that compartment, um, obviously being the closest compartment there. But as soon as we take that out with wizards, now you drop these wall breakers. They're not going to target that empty compartment. Same principle as the last dead space we saw. They're going for the buildings, and right there they do, opening it up. So that's an important technique to do if you want to save wall breakers and save jump spells, is to take stuff out ahead of time so your wall breakers can go deeper into the base. Okay, so a few more different scenarios. We're going to start taking a look at some more practical examples that you guys might see uh, when you're planning attacks. Taking a look at this, it is tricky because you have to think of the buildings. Don't be distracted by the walls. Look at the buildings. If you're, if you're talking about these three compartments, 
um, and dropping wall breakers in this area, which ones are going to be opened? Notice how this one building is sticking out compared to these two. Therefore, most wall breakers dropped in this area are going to target that wall because it, the building is a little bit closer. And also, don't be fooled by the fact that you can't drop anything within one tile of any building or wall. So you gotta kinda draw that imaginary line and that'll change which is the closest building. So you might be thinking, okay, I'll just drop a wall breaker right here and it can target you know, this gold storage. But you gotta keep in mind, it's gonna be dropped more like back here um, and that's gonna make it kind of close as to which building it actually targets, whether it's that one or that one. Uh, so. For this example, if you want to open up this compartment, you either have to be kind of tricky and drop your wall breakers like right here and try to get it to be closest to this gold storage, or you gotta take out this building first then come right here. It's almost like a hog rider, you can think of it that way. If you're using a hog rider to lure out the CC, um, and you're gonna drop it somewhere back here, which of these three buildings is closest, which one's the hog gonna go to? and whichever one's closest, the wall breaker will correspondingly break open the wall uh, that is corresponding to that section of the base, to that compartment, which that building is in. Okay, so there's the first wall breaker, of course, targets the farthest out building, which is the closest one to it. This next one is curious, a um, little bit sketchy. I'm not sure if the barracks was still closest because we dropped it so far over. We'll talk about uh, a little bit later why certain walls, when they have certain amounts of health, how that affects the wall breaker AI. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to our next example. So a lot of Town Hall 11s have these like uh, outer just strips of walls to kind of mess up your wall breakers, uh, just like we see right here, where it's there's nothing in front of it, nothing uh, behind it, and oftentimes people kind of wonder, okay, can I break through this wall? And I don't have an exact number for you, but if the wall is long enough, the wall breakers will actually start to break through it. And that kind of gets down to the point where it's not favorable to their AI, but the distance they would have to go to um, avoid it are so vast that they're just gonna say, all right, whatever, I'm just gonna break this wall. Um, that's not the best explanation, but I don't have the exact numbers for this video. So if you drop a wall breaker right in the middle, um, you can kind of use your common sense. It's gonna bust through that wall. But as you get closer to the outside, like right here, the wall breaker starts to think it's more favorable. It'll go around and target one of these walls right here. Um, so if you're gonna try to do a wall breaker breaker um, entry, especially for like a 10v11 attack where you have these outer walls, you're going to want to probably drop your wall breakers at the bottom here and you can, you know, be safely assured that the wall breakers are not going to open up that uh, one of these walls um, and you can even drop them farther over, but keep in mind there's not a whole lot of benefit to dropping them right here because they still have to go all the way around to target whatever wall they're going to target and there's, then there's some uncertainty as to which wall they'll target um, along this line here, it's better off to drop them right here and then that way you know they'll just head straight for the wall and open at least the compartment you want. So um, if you want to go straight into here, you're going to have to wall breaker through two layers, which can make it tricky because if you want to enter like right here, um, you can't necessarily drop wall breakers and go through both layers, they might get weird and go over to like there. So these can mess you up sometimes, you just got to be aware. Let's take a look at a replay that kind of shows how this pathing works. So you can see we drop the wall breaker right in the middle, it will go for the wall, but as we slide them out, they will go around and target the walls of the actual compartment here. Now they won't target the corner, they'll actually kind of dip back around in a little bit, not as far as they actually started, but they kind of go halfway back um, the direction they, they came from, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure how predictable that is, but something to note for sure. Okay, and our last example, kind of similar to the one we were taking a look at um, a few back, is uh, these three compartments, and oftentimes you find yourself trying to wall break uh, bowlers, a kill squad, into a, a small skinny compartment like this. And once again, do not be fooled by these walls here. You cannot open this wall because either of these buildings on these sides are going to make it too difficult. They're going to draw your wall breaks. So if you drop one back here, it'll target either that wall or that wall. The key is taking out one of these buildings, then you can come in at an angle and open up that wall. But this is one of the most deceptive, uh, probably, sides of a base that you can see and that might fool you. But just keep in mind, um, not only for attacking, but also for base building, how this can be used to your advantage 
when you're building your base and how you have to be aware of it when you're attacking because um, you cannot open up this compartment despite how the walls look. Um, don't watch the walls, watch the buildings. Um, those will indicate where your wall breakers are gonna go most of the time. So let's take a look at that replay. All right, and sure enough, you can see we dropped the wall breakers uh, in the back there, which um, obviously is gonna be closest to the walls that are sticking out, but in terms of buildings, closest to those gold mines, and that's the walls they target. But all we have to do is take out one of the gold mines. Now we can drop the wall breakers and they'll go for that compartment we want open. And with uh, both those compartments being open, the last one uh, to be opened is gonna be all the way over on the other side, opening up that gold mine there. All right, so this last thing here I think is the source of many broken iPads and tears that we see in clan wars after failed attacks caused by wall breaker fails. And that is this little phenomenon that's the partially damaged wall uh, phenomena. I don't know what you wanna call it, but basically if you have a wall that is lower than the other walls in terms of hit points, wall breakers tend to be attracted to it. And this is something you guys might have already noticed, but you'll see this illustrated in the replay I'm about to show. But basically if you drop a golem on this wall right here and it starts to do damage to try to get to that cannon, it's gonna make it so wall breakers within like a small area are all gonna target that wall when you drop them. So before, if you drop a wall breaker right here, it's gonna target there, a wall breaker right here is gonna target there. Now, because this wall right here has been damaged, um, the wall breakers are gonna go towards it. And this is why um, people um, will drop a wall breaker. Let's say there's a wizard tower back here and the wizard tower is locked onto the golem. People will try to drop the wall breakers next to the golem to avoid the wizard tower, but it's gonna go right to where the golem is headed because that wall has been partially damaged. So something you have to be very careful about. You can't try to wall break in, you know, one or two walls away from a golem. If it's taking splash damage, you have to go all the way over to like right here to be safe. So let's take a look at the replay and you'll see exactly what I mean. So let's take a look at this. We drop in these wall breakers. I'll do quite a few of them. So you can see you can almost target individual walls because these buildings are so uniform across the outside of this compartment, they can pretty much target individual walls. Now, if the buildings are gonna be more sparse and uh, awkwardly distributed, the situation will be different. But because they're like that, you can almost target individual walls. Now we drop the golem and you can see it's doing just a little bit of damage, not a lot, but a little bit of damage to that wall right in front of the cannon. So let's see what happens as we drop these wall breakers. We're gonna spread them out and notice how they're all going for that one wall. Now a few of them don't, but all of them within like a three tile, I guess maybe a tile and a half on each side of straight back from that golem, they all targeted that same wall. That was indicated by the fact that the, there was only one target symbol and uh, it didn't change until the uh, last like two wall breakers were dropped far enough away that they went for a different wall. But that entire like little um, group of wall breakers that was slowly spread along behind that golem was all targeting the same wall. So don't try to be too crafty with your wall breakers because <clears throat> when you are, um, if the wall is partially damaged, they're gonna end up going behind the golem, which will hurt you if a wizard tower or a mortar is locked on to that golem. So hope this video helped. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you're a new viewer, be sure to hit the subscribe button for more content and I will see you guys in my next video by Sectatron out.